I know there's already a bunch of reviews on this bag, but no one showed a kit that was similar to mine. And I know a lot of people have just like almost the same size kits as I do. It's like the RF Trinity plus the Ray Komodo plus the R5. Again, when this bag first came out, I thought it was all hype. I was like, that has to be overpriced. There's no way. And all the videos I was watching on it, it didn't really sell me on it. And so I was like, let me just buy it myself and see if it's any good. And I can say I 1000% don't regret it, which is rare because every other bag that I've bought, there was some slight buyer's remorse. Where I was like, ah, this is, I guess this will work, but we'll find out kind of thing. On this thing, I'm just like pretty content. All right, guys, I'm gonna break down everything that we can fit in this case, starting with the beautiful red Komodo. We have the Sony MPF batteries that don't fly around the bag, the Canon R5 with the battery grip, port keys BM5 monitor, the DJI Mavic 3. Moving on to the RF lenses, we have the 15 to 35, the 70 to 200 F4, the Sigma 35 millimeter, and the Tamron 11 to 20. Now, moving on to the photo kit, starting with the Mamiya 645 Pro TL with the power winder, and also have the 35 millimeter on there. Then we have the Contax TVS2, freaking love this camera, and the upper backpack compartment, whatever you want to call it. We have the Mamiya lenses, the 210 millimeter, 180 millimeter, the 80 millimeter. And again, I had the 35 millimeter on the Mamiya and just showing off that you could turn this to a backpack. Now organization, later in the video, I'll show you my old D&D setup and why this thing's way more amazing. Right above there, we have my SDI cables, HDMI cables and batteries and uh, multi-tools and then the iPad. And then we have the super padded laptop compartment that sits between the gear and your back. So it's extra safe. All right, guys, I've been through a million freaking bags forever trying to find like the perfect one that could kind of do everything. I'm a photographer, filmmaker, I don't know, call me whatever you want. Majority of my gigs where I make my living off of, I'm having to fly places and then I'm there for like a week and I'm having to be on my feet for three to five days. And it's just nonstop trying to work out one bag, one man band kind of stuff. It's been very hard to find the perfect bag. Now I will be honest, I just got this a few days ago. I haven't used it on an actual gig yet. Pretty confident in it already. I've been confident in most of my bags, most of my bags have been pretty well, uh, but just hasn't really uh, done the job on what I needed. Uh, but so far, this has met like all of my other weaknesses on the other bag. So let me show the other bags I've had already. The Gitso, I don't know what the name is. It was just a little bit too small. It doesn't have a lot of compartments in it and organization. The F-Stop, I think this one's the Talopa 45 liter bag. I was pretty happy with this. It's kind of ugly. It's not the best looking thing. The F-Stop stuff is you have these camera cubes. I had a photo kit in one and my cinema kit in my other one and then film kit in the other one and I was able just to switch them in and out whenever I needed. The ergonomics of the bags is kind of annoying. There's times on connection flights where this wouldn't fit in the overhead compartment and that's very stressful. You have to kind of punch it and beat it up. I went and I got F-stops. I don't remember what this one was called, but this is their 35 liter one. And the same cubes that fit in the Talopa actually fit in this. So I was kind of pissed because I thought buying this, I'd be able to fit more stuff in it, but it actually fit the same amount. It's just, you gotta squeeze it in a little bit harder. So I was kind of annoyed that I spent so much money on it. I think it was like a four or $500 bag. But again, the main issue is with this bag, this is their medium slope bag. And then one of those smaller cubes I just showed you fits in there. You can see right here, the medium bag, half of it was under this area. And so you couldn't leave it in here and dig through it. You always had to take it out to get to your other stuff. You can see the, the backpack straps just wasn't, there's not much to it. I have a bunch of hard cases, some messenger bags. I have Wonders Original Provoke. I really love that bag. I was And I was about to buy the 40 liter, but it's been sold out. And then I was like, Let's see what all this hype is around the Peter McKinnon bag. And it's safe to say the hype is, I think, legit. The price, again, to me, the fact that it's checking most of my my uh, check marks, boxes, whatever, I think is worth it. So let me just go over the back. The, the shoulder straps are like five times thicker than that, that uh, F-stop bag I just showed you. Has a cool little luggage mount on there. Another thing that annoyed me on the F-stop bags, the waist straps, you're not able to take those off. On the Peter McKenna one, you could take them off. I already slid mine out of here. So if I'm just shooting around town or if I'm just staying in California, I don't need that. If I'm going on any trips, I'm gonna throw those waist straps on. All right, so currently I have my photo set up in here. So when I'm shooting photos, I have film cameras on me and my digital camera. I have different ways of organizing it. You see, we have a second little organizer stuffed in right here. So I can easily take this part out and then re-put those in. And you see, when I take this out, I have the other dividers just laying in there so I can easily transition it super quick. I have a Mamiya Pro TL tucked into there. R5 will go into here. I have my Contax TVS2, freaking love this camera. I remember when I was seeing it in videos, the padding looked a little bit thin and I thought it looked a little bit sketch, like gear could get messed up. But it's actually pretty robust. They really thought this out. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm super content about this. And then in here real quick, let me show you what I got in here. Usually if my photo setup's in here, I'll just keep this open. I have my Mamiya 645 
Pro TL lenses in here and my light meter. The reason I, I keep this in here for uh, the photo kit is there's a lot of times where I'll just set my bag down in my car or something, keep going back and forth. So with this, again, I'm sure a lot of you guys have already seen this and this turns into a backpack and this has straps. That's just really clutch. Again, there's times where I don't want to carry the whole freaking bag because I don't need it. I just need a lens or two. And so yeah, from there, again, when I do my video kit, I just go in and I reorganize this. I can fit my full video kit, which is pretty crazy. So I can fit in the R5, which I use as B cam, all my RF lenses. And last but not least, let's go over the organization. One of the most important things with it. Up here, we have a little tablet space in here. We have a filter case. Let me show you the filter case I was using before I had these. So before I got this bag, I was using these Freewell hard cases. These things are pretty awesome, but the issue was, I was having to take a slot where a lens could have went. Again, I get to ditch these things now. And with this filter, it actually will fit. I was kind of scared because it only fits 18 millimeter filters and the Freewell magnetic ones are a little bit more bigger. It fits it just perfectly fine. And again, it's awesome. It's not taking up any lens space or anything. It just tucks in right there. And that's it, y'all. Doesn't look super obnoxious. It's not overly big. We'll see how this uh, stands up to the test of time. Yeah, shout out to Peter, I guess. You uh, did pretty good on this, bro. A lot of us are having to do multiple roles at once on shoots. Yeah, we're one man bands now. And this bag's kind of the perfect bag for a one man band, I guess. <laughs> hey, Shelko, bro. All right, all right, peace.